Okay, guys. Uh oh, I've lost my. Oh, there she is. Okay, so I am gonna do this step by step in several videos and then put them all together at the end so you have the whole thing together because there's so many steps and there's drying time and everything else. Um, I did my son's photo. I put it into an app. I will um, add that to the video, the website that I used to do that, um, to turn it into a stencil so it was black and white um, to transfer it so I could do the watercolors. Um, you can do this with pictures or I found this uh, mermaid image on Google that I liked. So this is what I'm going to use. So this is just regular printer paper that I printed in my printer um, from my computer. Uh, you're supposed to be able to do black and white or color with this transfer gel that I use or the transfer medium, but um, I tried to color one last night and I don't know if I didn't let it dry long enough, but it didn't work as well as the black. So um, this is the stuff, uh, Mod Podge uh, transfer medium, this 10 bucks at uh, Hobby Lobby. So this is for lighter dark fabrics. I don't know how well it would work on dark fabrics. I would have to uh, investigate this more. But anyway, yesterday was the first time that I've ever used this, so I was pretty impressed that it worked because the reviews I saw, people were saying that it didn't work. So I don't know. It worked for me. Uh, with the picture of Draven, there was a lot of white space around his picture, so that kind of made it difficult to uh, get all of the paper off of the top so that is why I cut my mermaid down to pretty close to where the design is just because I thought it would be easier but again you know I'm experimenting as I go here this is just what I did yesterday and what I'm thinking will help so um, we'll see yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna put her I was gonna put her in the middle because this is a 10 by 20 canvas but I think I'm gonna put her on the end only because on the rest of this, I could totally add a quote or something. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just kind of seeing what my size is here. Let me see if my camera is. So this stuff, I think what I had seen from other videos is that you don't really want too much of this around the outside edge, but um, it's dry is kind of clear so I don't think it really matters so I don't know I also found that um, using a sponge brush works better with it because if the paintbrushes I got uh, the hairs were coming out of it so the picture of Dre um, there's actually little hairs in the white and I can't stand that so we're just gonna stick with the um, sponge brush and we're going to put some of this, squeeze some of this. It's really thick. It's like a really thick glue. We're going to squeeze some of that. Um, this is water soluble, so you can wash your brushes out with soap and water, which is awesome. But you want a thick, even coat. If you're going all the way to the edges with your pitcher, make sure you get the edges good so that you don't have any corners sticking up. wide enough. A little bit more. Now, can you see the sheen? You probably can't because my lighting is horrible in here. Alright, well there's a sheen to it so you can see exactly where it is. So I think that looks good. So if you want to make sure too that if you have a photo that has words on it, you want to reverse it before you print it because when you transfer it you flip it upside down. So if your words are um not reverse when you print it's going to uh, be backwards 
And then you just rub this in. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna pull this up. I don't think it's quite thick enough. So we're gonna add a little bit more. My sponge was wet from last night, so that's probably why it thinned it out. lumps in there either so if it's lumping up make sure you get those out You don't want to get this on top, the transfer stuff, on top of your paper, so be very careful when you're going around it. Because it's a canvas and it's squishy underneath, you can also try putting something hard. To help when you press it down, so it really sticks on there good. Okay. Now, in the videos I watched using, actually, they used regular Mod Podge. They didn't even use this transfer medium. Um, they said let it dry for 12 hours or 24 hours. Um, last night, uh, I had a bunch of ladies rushing me because they wanted to see what I was making. So, what I did was stick it in front of. We have a. Um, the heater vent in my dining room is in the wall, not the floor, so I just stuck it right in front of that, and it seemed to uh, work pretty well with drying. So I think that's down pretty well. Get a little bit of goop on there. All right, so. Just be careful when you're putting your image down that you don't get the transfer stuff onto the side of the paper. You want that to stay on the other side of the paper. So when you're going around the edges, just be really careful. Um, if you get a big chunks anywhere, you know, smooth them out. It does dry clear, but um, I think like chunks may uh, be lumpy in your final project, so. There's that step. We will continue. Oh, can you see it? I'll darken that up a little bit. Mm. Yeah, that works better. Okay. So, that's what it looks like. And we're going to um, set this over by the heat so it dries and I can get the rest of this done today. All right, so we are dry. Now I'm noticing that where that transfer medium is in my picture isn't, it's kind of rubbery and got a funky texture. So once we get this off, um, the paper off, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second, I think what I'm gonna do is go over the whole thing in um, this uh, mat. Match patch, and um, and then we'll get we'll do um, the spit over it, and uh, I'll go from there. But um, 
I mean, this feels dry to me, so I'm just going to go for it and cross my fingers that it has transferred. Um, when I did the one of Draven, I um, actually stuck this under the sink to get wet, but my camera is hooked to my laptop, and I don't want to move all that into the kitchen. So I'm just going to use my spray bottle that I use for when I uh, sit, and I'm going to get this wet. And you'll see that the um, image will turn darker when it's wet. So I'll let that sit for just a second. Kind of soak in there. That is a lot of water. Let's see if I got something to wipe off. I just blotted that. So what you do, and you don't want to rub too hard, but you're going to rub the paper up off. But don't rub too hard because it'll rub the design right off. But, I mean, you can see that the paper's coming up and it's left the design on the um, canvas. Pretty cool, right? Um, you can also use this on wood, um, which is going to be a um, future project. I did pick one up at Hobby Lobby um, yesterday for three bucks. So we will do that once I find a cool picture I want to put on it. So this is kind of messy, but I think that it's a really cool technique and I'm glad that uh, I had this thought pop in my head a while ago and uh, I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad I got gift cards for Christmas so that I could go up and buy this stuff just to try it. So I'm going to go rinse this off real quick and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gotten the top layer of paper off. I can see where around the edges I didn't get this completely glued down so they're up a little bit. But I think it's going to be okay once I... Um, Put the mat Mod Podge on it so you can see the difference. Oops. Still got some little paper fibers on there, but that's pretty cool, right? So I am going to let this dry again get in front of the heater so we can speed up the process a little and then we'll go over it with the um, match podge and go from there. Oh and we're back. I just pulled the seal off of my match podge and it's exploded over the edge so let's get that out of there. Does anybody else think that this stuff stinks? I think it's stinky. Alright, so we are going to attempt to even this all out. By... Make sure all my little paper fibers are off of there. I'm going to glue those down. Alright. I'm just going to do the whole thing. And uh, hope that works out. But this is the mat, so it should be pretty easy to spin on.
Now, I didn't put the Mod Podge on the, the picture of my son last night. I just, as soon as I pulled the paper off, because I didn't have, like, these edges and the extra uh, transfer stuff, because it took up the whole canvas. So, um, as soon as I rinsed it off, and while the canvas was wet, I just spit on it so that it really was, like, using watercolors. Too much on here. But I think this is going to even it out, so it should be alright. Um, I did spray seal that one from last night, so I'll grab that in just a second as soon as I'm done doing this. I sealed it with the um, gloss spray, so there's a I just love cat hair. <laughs> it's great. Alright. It's going to go around the edges so it's all even. With the excess in my brush. My sponge. So one more quick go over so it's all going in the same direction. I think that looks good. So I'm going to set it over here to the side again so it'll dry. I just grabbed this again so you can see that there is a like a shine to it now. And I used um the Krylon Color Master Clear. It says it's non yellowing, so I decided that we were gonna try that out. And it also says indoor outdoor. So we'll see how that works because I usually use Rust Oleum. This actually is a little bit cheaper than the Rust Oleum. So we'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, so that's done. That's in the bottom <clears throat> with my gold marker. But yeah, turned out pretty cool and I like it. So. Uh, Once this uh, Montrage dries, we'll uh, move on to the spit. Okay, so we're going to paint our mermaid. I just put a little bit of, just a couple drops of each color of spit. I mean, I got some that are super diluted, but that's okay, because we're going to use them as watercolors anyway. Um, got some uh, water and paint brushes. You got to move, buddy. figure out how I want to do this. Now it's still kind of a, got a different texture from that um, transfer medium but I think it's going to be okay because I'm going to spit and um, eventually I'm going to add words to the side of it and I'm going to epoxy the whole thing so I think that it's going to be okay. I don't know. I'm learning along with you so I really need like more inches of space. That would be helpful. So because we put Mod Podge on this, we don't want to use too much water because Mod Podge is water-based and it'll get all gooey. So I think I want a smaller brush. We do a smaller brush for her hair. And then uh, Alright, you gotta move, bud. Look out, buddy. Come on. Oh, go sit down. Go out in the other room. Sorry, two-year-old. <laughs> so 
So I think what I want to do, well, you know what I need? I don't know if it's over in that bucket. Give me two seconds here. So I don't have, or we don't have a peach color, so I'm going to use a little bit of our orange, our Phoenix Fire, just a smidgen, and a little bit of white, and get it as uh, light as I can get it for her face and her skin. So I found a cute little, what's going on? I found a cute little saying for the other side too. Just have to get more vinyl because this is a large space here to uh, cover. This canvas is a um, 10 by 20. Hmm. See, hopefully that's enough. Some water. Get it really thinned out. I'm going to try to thin the spit out instead of putting water on the canvas. And these are cheap paintbrushes I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm regretting it now because the little hairs are falling out. Yeah, that's a good color. Wait till mommy's done, okay? No, there's not this image that I got. I think someone drew it. So it doesn't have definitive lines on some of it, which is fine because I don't, it's not, it's not a, Supposed to be perfect. Watercolors are never uh, solid lines, I don't think. That's what makes them cool. I think that's a pretty good color for his skin. Kind of got a little funky face. his uh, skin tone. Oh, well. To uh, Mama. Mama. zoom in on this, but Mama. I haven't played with it enough to figure that out yet, I guess. Mama. What, babe? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, when I'm done, uh, just move my light a little bit so you can see it. So that looks good. I'm gonna do her Mama. tail really pretty colors, so da, da, da. to figure da. out. Mama. What? Da, da. Shh. Da. You gotta be quiet. So I have a little bit of my um, shh, hummingbird sparkling because it's my favorite, and it's a mermaid color, I think. Stop. I think 
that'll be good color for her fins. Zane, please turn the show on that he'll watch. mixed up in here a little bit too so I'm going over the outline also you're not painting right now it's mommy's turn Okay, sorry about that. I had to go uh, do something with him. He was mad because he wanted to paint too. So, I put um, the hummingbird on here. So, what I'm going to do is just... Go back over it with water. So it's a little more flowy on the edges. watercolors it doesn't really matter if you go outside the lines this kind of behaving like you know those uh paint books that I used to get as a kid that had the paint already in them and you just added water i used to love those hummingbird on her uh, top here. Seashell. I'm not sure what it is because I can't really see. But I'm going to cover up her boob. Alright. So next I have a little bit of uh, pink sparkling. It's already diluted, so... Making purple when it mixes with the hummingbird, so that's cool. there. Hold on, let me just get this part done. Let me do this while they're sleeping. All right, Jackson, hold on a minute. Just 
super diluted because I'm almost out of it, so I had to add water to the bottom. Again, because it's watercolors, you don't have to be super careful about staying in the lines because I think it looks pretty if you're not. Blend as you go. Alright, let's add a little pink to the tail. If you get it too dark, you can go back in with some water and thin it out a little bit. I think that looks good though. I'm going to fill in that little spot there in the middle with some hummingbird again. of it with coming
That's looking good. So we can finish the rest of her tail up here on the top. Our hummingbird. Good, except for I think I want to do a little darker purple down here. Should do him or her. I think I'm gonna grab some yellow. Grab some yellow. Put a little punchy Fran in the hair. That's sparkly too. That might be fun. I'm guessing where the edges are on this again because it's not, I didn't print out all of the definitive edges on her hair, but it's okay. We can guess. some of the other colors. So what matches your tail? Thanks. 
good to me. They had a little uh, pink and hummingbird to her hair. Maybe a little Zia. I stuck my arm in the paint, so that's always fun.
pale. We're going to mix some of that dark color in there with his, so his matches his tail. Really loose the watercolors on this side, maybe. Got a little. Okay, I think that looks good. So we're just gonna go with that. Looks good to me. So I think definitely that's what I'm gonna do with this side. To uh, use my bigger brush, I just use up the spit on my uh, light hair. Just kind of throw it on here. See ya. just made. Pink and green make brown. Get big uh, swatches or splatters. That's okay too. That's fine. Purple. Here's not so much, but Oh. 
extra edges too. Be one of those things where you gotta just tell yourself when to stop. I really like that pink though. I wish it would not turn brown on that green. Just need a little bit more, I guess. Just a little bit. Brown, pink and green make brown. I don't like it. Alright. I'm just going to leave this now. Let's see if we can get that. I got all in the frame here. I'm spilling my water. Just was careful. So I like it. 
We'll see how it turns out. Wanted to try.